appreciate y'all for pulling up. I'm your host, Gabo Say So. We're back with another video, man. You know, the NFL draft is a couple of... Damn, shit, what is it? Like, tomorrow, actually. <laughs> so we're gonna have news breaking around the clock, especially when it comes to these new rookie players. My New England Patriots hosting the third overall pick. Shamefully, there's been speculation that they might be moving on from that pick. We don't really know yet. This is around that time everybody's putting on poker faces. You know what I mean? We're gonna see who's gonna crack, who's gonna fold, and uh, who's gonna make the big moves and go after some of these star rookies. We already know my past need a quarter back so huge nfl draft update let's see what microphone got to tell us man talk to me nice those are the two teams that have expressed an interest in moving up to number three now, i'm not making that move up on washington i'm taking Jaden down there's no way i'm giving jay this is pretty exciting you know if you could go into a situation like that the huge nfl draft trade is about to happen the question is which pick does it involve and which team is going to be the team that jumps up there is instances where it makes sense for a particular team to make a major move to trade up for a quarterback and at the same time there are multiple teams that <laughs> could definitely trade back in this year's nfl draft yeah they at show the my pass a little bit too much i just don't understand why my team is even trying to negotiate that third overall pick after what we shown last year we got rid of arguably one of the worst quarterbacks in the league in matt jones and now here we are talking about potentially trading out of the third pick bro it's just damn son like tom brady was such a lightning in a bottle the odds of us finding anybody half as nice is just like you just never know in the draft bro because one pick could be the separation from trevor lawrence and fucking zach wilson Bruh. you know what i mean it's a steep plummet we got the third overall pick if we don't get this campbell kid uh, who's who's to say what Mayo might be or this other kid? Man, I'm tired of the struggle. There are teams that have no problem making a horrific mistake to move up to select a player that might not even really help their team so much. But as a result of having an incompetent front office, they probably would do it anyway. We've seen that happen in the past. <coughs> so before we get to the content, we are on the grind to 900k subscribers. Make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications. Yeah, shout out to my channel bro. Make sure you check content, us out on man. Snapchat for bonus content. And now that we get all that out of the way. Freak! I mean, show some love. LB, I click on the no, link we'll in the gonna description skip the, down the to intro, one though. two. What's going on, everybody? Bold prediction here, but Caleb Williams is going to be selected with the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. He's already Chicago's talking going to ruin like him. he is a Chicago Bear. And the Bears are, was an eight and nine team last year, um, I believe, and uh, seven and seven and ten. Sorry, and and um, you know that's that's pretty good for a team that has the first pick. Um, and and they got a good defense. Um, they got good players on offense. Um, and and you know. It's, it's pretty exciting, you know, if you could go into a situation like that. So things get really exciting for the NFL draft once you get to the number two overall pick. On our last video on this subject, we discussed some controversy in regards to Jaden Daniels being selected number two overall by the Washington Commanders. But as it stands, it looks like the Washington Commanders made their decision with the number two overall pick. Most likely, it's going to be Jaden Daniels with the number two overall pick. And the Commanders aren't going to be... Y'all think the Jaden Daniels kid is going to succeed on the Commanders? I think Commanders... Uh, very there's, there's a couple of franchises in the league where quarterbacks go to die um i you just never really have high expectations for anything that goes on in washington nowadays is willing to trade back from the number two overall pick and peter schrager went on the pat mcafee show to test this it, it sounds like daniels two to the commanders is a lot more likely now that i'm gonna put my name on something now i think Jaden daniels is gonna go to washington. Choice, take him. and this seems to be correct because He's not on their top first of pick. this diana russini tweeted out saying teams trying to move up for a quarterback and calling washington are being told that they are not moving washington's general manager adam peters has publicly stated the commanders feel great about staying at number two overall and picking their QB. If you take a look at the commander's entire offseason, it seems like this team was built for a dual threat QB of the likes of Jaden Daniels to succeed. They have a great wide receiver core. They went out and signed Austin Eckler in the offseason. They also signed Tyler Biotic to attempt to shore up that offensive line a little bit more. They also signed Marcus Mariota, who's a dual threat quarterback that was a form. God damn. Offensive line a little bit more. They also signed. I saw Mariota been aging in dog years. God damn, I still look like Obama. And Marcus Mariota, who's a dual threat quarterback that was a former Heisman Trophy <coughs> winner, that was also selected number two overall in the NFL that draft. Boy, stress. On top of that, they hired Cliff Kingsbury as an offensive coordinator. Oh, shit. His line of expertise is with dual threat QB. Okay, so, okay. in my opinion, it's very likely that the commanders go Jaden Daniels with the number two overall pick. And that's despite Adam Schefter playing games with us, which we made a video on recently. But that isn't stopping other teams to attempt to move up to select Jaden. 
Jaden Daniels. Oh. Theoretically, if any team gives up three first round picks to move up to the number two overall pick, you'd be foolish to not consider the offer. Typically, whenever you select a quarterback in the first round of the NFL draft, it's more likely than not that they're going to fail. I mean, look at the 2021 <laughs> NFL draft, which was the last NFL draft that had a that plethora trash, of QB boy. talent go in the first round. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones. Of all of those players, only one, the number one overall pick, is still on the same team. And as exciting as this crazy quarterback and pathetic pool at the same is, time. who's to say that the same thing isn't going to happen again? During the 2015 That's NFL draft, saying. the top two picks were also Heisman Trophy winning QBs. Jameis Winston at number one, Marcus Mariota at number two. And famous and imagine if we draft the kid Mayo with the third overall pick and he becomes a Jameis Winston, bro. Damn, son. Oh, so much stock. We're going to have to pay him. We're going to have to be patient. If he ends up having a Jameis Winston like career, it's like, oh, fuck. We, we fumbled it. Famously, the Tennessee Titans rejected a huge godfather trade offer from the Philadelphia Eagles to move up to the number two overall pick to select Marcus Mariota. In retrospect, that looks like a horrific mistake. Jeez. That being said, Mel Kuyper proposed a <coughs> trade scenario where the Las Vegas Raiders trade up for Jaden Daniels. Think me, let's make that move. If I they had the quarterback, they don't, right? So you're going to give up Jaden Daniels, who we think can be great, right? We've have Thompson, Lamar Jackson, and Randall Cunningham. And you're going to let the Raiders Jeez. get them, who need them because they're in a division with Mahomes, right? And they got all those great quarterbacks like Josh Allen and all of them to deal with in the AFC. And if you told me, if somebody there today, is anybody a psychic? Is there any psychics on board? Ooh, if there's a psychic um, that could I'm tell me that, that Michael Pratt from Tulane. Okay, Michael Pratt, I think you probably are, Laura. Is Michael Pratt from Tulane? Is Keaton Slovis from BYU, right? Ooh. Is somebody going to be Brock Purdy? Is there's a Brock Purdy out there? And I'm Washington. Hey, hey sign me up. Yeah. But I'm not good enough to predict. I don't think anybody's good enough to predict that. So despite the hall, and I'm an advocate for the hall, and I'm Monty Hall, and I love it, right? I'm not making that move up from Washington. I'm taking Jaden Dan. There's no way I'm giving Jay the Antonio Pierce, so Adam Arizona loves him. Jaden was too bad. This is the NFL. You don't pick where you go. Now, at the same time, Mel Kuyper isn't necessarily known for nailing his trade predictions. This guy also famously stated that Justin Fields could be moved for the number eight overall pick in this year's NFL draft. Place there. If you trade Justin Fields to Atlanta, you could get the eighth pick overall. So you could have one, eight, and nine field and be able to reach recoup a second round pick by trading down with one of those two Hell picks, no. either eight or nine. So a lot of maneuverability for the Bears either way field, but if it's me, I'm taking Caleb Williams number one and trading Justin Fields. So that aside, Vinny Bonsignore actually said that general manager Tom Telesco said that they have a plan in place to be aggressive and move up in the NFL draft, obviously pending on certain circumstances get of two, and trading down as well. So what are those circumstances? My personal theory is that the Raiders are targeting Jaden Daniels, but as Adam Schefter said on the Pat McAfee show, even before all of this, here is the most likely scenario. The two teams in my mind that I've been able to ascertain that have been the most active have been the Minnesota Vikings, number one, and I think second, if we're going to quantify it, is the New York Giants. Now, whether they can Vikings. get up to number three is a whole other issue. Of all the teams that I believe make the most sense to trade up for any player at all whatsoever, it's the Minnesota Vikings. You have Justin Jefferson, yeah. Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson as your wide receivers. You went out and signed Aaron Jones as your halfback, but you so, no longer have Kirk Cousins to sling the rock. Loaded you offense, clearly no need QB. A quarterback this year, and Sam Darnold. With Sam Darnold is definitely not up for discussion. And Come according on, to Adam Schefter <laughs> via the Pat discussion. McAfee show, things get really interesting at the number three overall pick, especially because the Minnesota Vikings aren't 100% locked in on only Jaden Daniels. They're more likely to move the pick than the commanders, but I still think the odds favor them staying where they are. And this is where things get really interesting because of all teams that I think are most willing to move on from their Patriots. draft pick, the New England Patriots top the list. Nothing against the Patriots at all whatsoever. They have many more holes to fill on their team other than their quarterback. Last year, they had three players that were receivers or tight ends that finished in the bottom 10 of the NFL for separation. So it didn't make a lot of sense to thrust in another quarterback in a situation where he doesn't necessarily have any weapons to throw to. Wouldn't it be more wise to get as much draft capital as humanly possible to build up the other aspects of your team? So in a few years time, you could be in a scenario that the Washington Commanders or Chicago Bears are in. You want yeah. your quarterback to be able to throw to wide receivers like Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and Cole Komet. Or in the Commanders case, Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin. I'm sure you get my- Listen, I'm all for this if they're not in love with 
with Mayo. Um, to say he's a third overall pick, I couldn't comment on that. But would it be worth it to risk not having him? Like, what are the odds of him being at least a Pro Bowl quarterback in that system, man? Because we could essentially move him and get three, four first-round picks, bro. I don't know, man. Four picks don't sound bad, bro. Especially if this kid ends up being mid. It's going to look like a heist. If he ends up being Mahomes. <laughs> point. In the case of the New England Patriots, they seem to be content to stay at number three overall and select a quarterback. But obviously, that's not what they're hoping to achieve here. Now, Adam Schefter also laid out a scenario that would be the Patriots' dream scenario, and that's if the Washington Commanders happen to pass on Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is the favorite to be number two. Obviously, he's not going three. Yeah. If he goes to yeah. three, the, the price of three goes up a lot. But I think the Commanders, in the end, will opt for Daniels, that Vikings who have expressed the most interest in coming up to number three, the Giants have Damn, expressed some Daniels as well. Like that. The Patriots very likely are just sit where they're at and, and pick from number three. So this is where it gets interesting because on top of the Minnesota Vikings who have the most interest in coming up to number three, who currently hold the number 11 and number 23 pick in this year's NFL draft, you also have the New York Giants who are interested in moving up in this year's NFL draft. And the question is whether <laughs> We're not, not doing no York business Giants with the Giants, man. For a brand new quarterback in this year's NFL draft personally i think the best option for the giants is to stand pat and either select malik neighbors if he's available to you at the sixth overall pick yeah, and finally nice. get daniel jones a true number one wide receiver to throw the football to or invest in offensive line once again primarily because evan neal has not been working out for you guys i personally think moving up and trying to get a brand new quarterback for the new york giants would be a horrific mistake i feel like there's other ways for this team to improve without giving up as many assets and i feel like trading up for a brand new quarterback would be a marginal improvement at best daniel jones is on a solid contract with a potential out in 2025 you might as well make the most of that situation so my personal theory is if the giants are moving up my hope is they're moving up to try to take marvin harrison jr but at the same time i don't think the gap between marvin harrison jr and malik neighbors is so significant to the point where you need to consider trading up in the nfl draft although i think marvin harrison jr is the safer prospect i feel like the parallel that could be drawn here is similar to when who Julio Jones and AJ Green were coming out of college for the NFL draft. There's not too much of a gap between these two wide receivers. Both are going to be amazing in the NFL, Sheesh. at least from my perspective, and both could help the New York Giants tremendously, which means the most significant trade that could happen is with the New England Patriots. And Peter Schrager actually discussed this even further on the Pat McAfee show. I think May does go third. And the two teams that I've been hearing the most about being May teams in the last 48 hours, the Minnesota Vikings, and the New York Giants. Now, I will admit, it's very difficult to evaluate quarterback talent. Drake may have had a down year this past year. JJ McCarthy won the national championship this year. It's very difficult to determine who's going to be better than who. But I think at the very minimum, JJ McCarthy might be a little bit more of a project than Drake may. And I don't think that's too bold of a take to suggest. I've seen quarterback prospects like McCarthy before, relatively young for their age, needing to sit down for a year or two, but with the potential to be the best prospect in this entire NFL draft. If the new New England Patriots want to opt for that route if they want to draft JJ McCarthy and have him sit for a year and if they're not completely sold on Drake May at the number three overall pick it does make sense to trade that pick to a team like the Minnesota Vikings which I believe are probably the prime candidate to move up to the number three overall pick to select their quarterback of the foreseeable future in the case of the Vikings I feel like the right quarterback could instantly make That's them contenders crazy. whereas the wrong quarterback can set them back for years to come and completely close their Super Bowl window shut and in this instance the quarterback that makes the most sense for the Minnesota Vikings system would probably be Drake May. So we're going to keep an eye out for any crazy trades that occur. But in addition to Yo. this, it's important to note that wow. Peter Schrager also says that this isn't a question of a pick happening within the top three of the NFL draft. Rather, it's a question of a trade happening within the top six of the NFL draft. And I've been on the phones nonstop for the last 48 hours, including this morning. Uh, and I'm not talking just the top four. I think the top six, Ooh. including Penix and Knicks, all in the, in the Whoa. first have so let me know in the comment section down below which team is the most likely to trade up for their quarterback which team would make no sense at all to trade up for a quarterback but they could potentially do it i think if the raiders want a quarterback they should stand pat and maybe take a flyer on michael Penix. i feel like the new york giants shouldn't draft a quarterback at all and focus on other aspects of their team but i'd like to hear what you have to say aside from that i'm your boy mike i'm dropping all these are compelling cases next man. upload
It's going to be hard to tell what either of the teams do. I, I just hate that New England got to be caught up in this. Because one of my boys is actually a Viking fan. So Viking fans that watch my videos, y'all let me know what would y'all do. Because I was trying to make the case that if the Vikings don't go after a quarterback, you might as well trade JJ, right? And it sounds crazy in theory. But if you think about it from a business aspect, you think about the fact that the Vikings currently don't have a quarterback. You have Hawkinson. You have Addison. Um, Hawkinson and Addison, right? Yeah. You have that head coach. Um... You have a system that's devised, that's designed for a team to succeed. Paying JJ and making him the highest paid quarterback, with, with highest paid wide receiver with no quarterback is like, where are you guys going? All that money being put into a wide receiver that's just going to catch slants all season. You know what I mean? And struggle to even probably get to a thousand yards because you either have Sam Darnold or Nick McMullen or a rookie quarterback. So if the Vikings can make a move to take my third overall pick, I respect it if the package is like one of those offers you can't say no to. You know what I'm saying? On some Godfather shit. Give me an offer I can't refuse. You know what I mean? Give me something I can't say no to. And you know what I mean? We got a deal. I want your future. You want this quarterback? You believe in Mayo? I want your future. I want assets. I want everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all got to come out of pocket. We're talking about multiple first round picks for generations. You know what I mean? Let's start with that. And we'll work our way towards closing out on the deal, man. Y'all let me know in the comment section what you think, man. But damn, it's getting heated, bro. I'm excited. NFL Draft is a couple of days away, man. Time to see what's happening.